Well, gang, I'm going to go ahead and get us rolling here. I don't see anybody else popping in the queue, and uh, I like to wait, but I also like to respect your time. So, uh, I'll, let me make sure. Are we recording? We are recording. Awesome. So, uh, I am David Satterfield, Director of Technology and Mark Center Tech Trainer for Keller Williams Consultants Realty, and uh, pretty excited today. We're going to be covering uh, landing pages in command. Uh, something near and dear to my heart. I'm, I'm actually about a 20-year marketing professional. I, I spent 17 years over at CB Richard Ellis uh, on the marketing side. And so anything that is uh, marketing related or especially uh, digital marketing related uh, and web related is near and dear to my heart. I, I actually uh, hold a webmaster certification uh, through CIW. And, and that's just something in my wheelhouse that I really enjoy doing. I've been doing for about 20 years now. So I am excited to talk about this with you guys today. Give me just one sec here. I'm going to pop in the command and share my screen with you guys. Uh, one of the things that, uh, I mean, this is a great topic to talk about anyway, but uh, one of the things that kind of prompted me to, to teach this class was, uh, I, I mean, we have, we're pushing what I think uh, Dana just posted the other day, we're, we're over 200 agents now at KW Consultants. I mean, we've got a, a great, great uh, agent staff here and, and uh, lots, lots of awesome realtors, and we've got a good mix of, of you know, seasoned uh, veterans, but brand new people as well. And, uh, you know, I, I had a couple of people that tell me, you know, we're having discussions, basically technical discussions and talking about kind of what they're doing with their technology to help their business. Uh, I had a couple of people, you know, tell me and kind of peg me as, oh, well, you're, you're just the command guy, whatever that means. Um, <laughs> and it is true. I, I do teach command, but, you know, gang, I, I always tell everybody, I'm not here to tell anybody how to run a business. Uh, if there are other marketing, you know, vendors out there that have something that you want and it is adding value to your business, by all means, I will never tell anybody not to do that. Uh, but being the command guy, uh, <laughs> you know, what that does put upon me as part of my job and part of my onus to help everybody out and add value for you is to find out the areas of your business that aren't doing so hot. Maybe it's lead generation, you know, maybe it's uh, social media. We've got a lot of people really embracing social media lately. Uh, maybe your database is just a mess right now, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, again, if another, you know, something else is working very fantastic, but you know, I, I really enjoy having those conversations with everybody about where are you missing out on and what can we do to help? And command might be a solution for that. Um, one of the other advantages, it's a cost-effective solution because you already have it, being a KW agent, being an employee here. So, uh, that's always great if, if I can help and give you a great resource. That's awesome. If I can save you a buck, that's even more awesome. <laughs> or two bucks or 10 bucks or 20 bucks. I, I don't know what's the going rate on dot loop these days. I can't even keep track. 30 bucks. Um, <laughs> but uh, so the landing pages have come up and, and landing pages are great. You know, one thing I want to bring up about landing pages before we get going here, uh, landing pages are not related to your agent page or your agent or your team website. If you're using an outside vendor, these are standalone pages. They, they are not connected to those pages. Not to say that you couldn't link off to them, but they are not connected to them by any uh, way, shape, means, or form. Um, the advantage to that is that they can be used for kind of specialty purposes, and we're definitely going to dig into those today. Um, but also, they can be used very easily for your uh, command smart plans. Uh, if you're doing any kind of smart plans in command, which is, you know, great for follow-up actions, it's, it's a great tool to use. Uh, to reach out to your, your clients and your, your sphere of influence on a regular basis, uh, whether it's birthdays, home anniversaries, you know, open house follow-ups, uh, whatever the case may be, uh, it's very easy to plug these landing pages into your, um, your smart plans. The other thing that it's great for is for lead generation. Uh, one of the things, if you ever get into doing the Facebook ads, which a lot of people are ramping up on, and we've got a class coming up on that too, is uh, that they give you the opportunity to put a URL for whatever it is that you're advertising. So if, if you've got a brand new listing, you've got a coming soon, it's a new agent, I've got a coming soon, or I've got a, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a just listed webpage and you've built that page out, you can drive traffic to that website. Now, the great thing about Facebook is they have a lead gen tool on there. And when I teach that class, I always encourage everybody to use that. What it does is before it'll link off to your page, it literally, uh, makes people give you their contact information and you get that automatically in command. That's one of the great advantages of doing Facebook ads in command is capturing those leads automatically. Um, but for anybody that gets around, you know, whether they, if you didn't have a Facebook ad or, you know, you just want to push this out on your, 
your uh, team page or your solo page or something, not do an ad, uh, this gives you a place to do that. And you can also add that lead capture uh, form in there, which again, automatically puts people into your command database. Any Anytime that I can automatically, that word automatically comes up and I can help you do that, uh, save you guys some time that I know I'm doing my job right. So uh, let me go ahead and share my screen here, gang, and we will get going. Here we go. Can everybody see that? Okay. Thumbs up. Uh, gang, feel free to chime in at any time. If you got uh, any questions, feel free to ask those. Um, I, I definitely, I've, I've got some spe specific comments here, but uh, kind of the advantage of having a small class is we can dive down some rabbit holes if we need to. <laughs> so feel free to just chime in whenever you need to. Um, so without any further ado, uh, the first thing that I'd like to always tell everybody, I'm going to kind of go through this first. Um, whether you have done this or not, what I always ask everybody to do before you go off creating landing pages or really any of the marketing tools in command is to just either do or verify that you have set up your marketing profile in command properly. Okay. You may have set that up. I know I teach that in my beginning cl uh, command class, um, but also I've had a lot of seasoned agents that didn't realize they hadn't touched that thing in a while. And when they go to make a, a landing page, maybe their headshot photo was like, two revisions of a headshot photo ago or their their contact information wasn't updated with a new phone number or the fact that they're on a team now. So within command to get to that, you just go up to the top right here where your headshot photo is and your name, that little arrow there will give you your command menu. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And then I'm going to go down to settings. And when you first come into our command settings, it just takes you to the area where it shows all the apps that you're connected to, typically things like DocuSign and dot loop, Facebook posts and Facebook ads, et cetera. Uh, but if you look over on the left-hand side, we've got some other things as well. We've got general settings over here. We've got command settings. The third one down says connect settings. And that's what we wanna go into. If I click on that down arrow under connect settings, you're gonna see your marketing profile pops out there, okay? So we went from settings to connect settings to marketing profile. I'll go ahead and click on that. And boom, here we go. Um, this is, uh, uh, the easiest way for me to explain this is if you did not have this option and you were to go off into command and start making things, your agent website, your landing pages, your, your social media posts, et cetera, uh, you would find yourself repetitiously having to add the same stuff over and over and over again, your name, your phone number, your email address, your headshot photo, et cetera, et cetera. So the cool thing about setting up your command profile or making sure that it's set up properly is that anytime you do anything marketing related, including all those things I mentioned in command, it grabs that information for you and then it automatically adds it for you, okay? All the command templates have these things called placeholders and it just fills in that info for you. So if you have set this up, great. Uh, if you have and you haven't looked at it a while, definitely encourage you to come in here and take a peek uh, and just to make sure that everything's up to date. So we'll go through all the basic information here. Uh, the first things first, up on the top right, you can see where it says, use my information to brand my agent site. That should be turned on by default. That is the default setting in command, uh, which means this button is green. That means it's activated and it's turned on. Uh, but please go in and check that. I, uh, I actually have found a couple of agents where that was turned off for some reason. Uh, I don't know why. And that would prevent that information from being pulled over and put in automatically, like I mentioned. That's a whole advantage of the marketing profile, okay? Um, hey, David, um, I'm yeah. only like interrupting you because I know Nate's <laughs> God, yeah, no worries. Nate went um, I'm going to I'm going to try I'm going to listen to your class. And if I still have there was a problem and I, I meant to message you earlier. But I am my Facebook is not connecting on command. Okay. And I and I remember that was like that was like the number one tip. Like if you cannot if you are not connected, like you can't move on sure. and like it like says it's connected, but it's not. And I right. I don't know. I'm gonna, after we like do this, I'm going to do um, you know, I'm going to check it again to see if this may be yeah, no uh, um, And if not, I'll like text you because no, uh, yeah. I, was say, I, don't I'll, know. I'll I even had my husband who's a pretty tech guy look at it and I, he's like, I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, before we get out of here, I'll put I'll make sure I put my Calendly link in the uh, in the yeah. chat, and then okay. just set up some one-on-one -on -one time. I mean, I've I've literally even got time this afternoon, late this afternoon, okay. uh, or even tomorrow if you want to talk, um, okay. and just hit me up and yeah, we'll walk through that. We'll get it figured out. Yeah, but that. still continue on what you're doing, and then yeah. if I still yeah, no, thanks for chiming in. And let okay. me know any anytime you guys need help. Yeah, definitely hit me up sometime. Thank you. 
All right, so uh, we'll just kind of go through some of the stuff that's here in your marketing profile. Again, this stuff that gets pulled over automatically on all your marketing stuff. First thing, obviously, your headshot photo that is required. Um, I do always like to bring up there's a couple of requirements on any of these graphics or photos. One, it has to be a, a JPEG or a PNG format. That's pretty standard. Uh, typically, don't have to worry about that. But one thing that does come up sometimes, there is a, a one megabyte file size limit on this. I bring that up because a lot of times our agents go out, they get brand new headshots. Even in our office, we hold kind of photo shoots sometimes out in the lobby, some of the offices. Um, and a lot of times when you get those headshot photos back from the photographers, the file sizes are very large. I literally just had mine done a couple of weeks ago and they came back to me like four to six megabytes. So you need to shrink that size down. Now, any, any computer, whether it's a PC or a laptop, Mac, whatever's gonna have a basic photo editor. If you wanna try it, that's fine. But if you don't know how to do it, please do not sweat resizing your graphics. Get a hold of me, send me the photo, say, can you resize this for my marketing profile? I'd be happy to do that for you and just send it right back to you so that, so that you're good to go, okay? I'd rather you guys focus on real estate, I'll focus on graphical stuff for you to help you out. How's that? <laughs> okay, uh, the team logo, same kind of thing. Uh, this is where your team logo would go, or we do have um, solo agents that actually have their own logo. So don't let the team thing dissuade you. Uh, if you're a solo agent and you have your own logo, by all means, put that as your team logo as well, okay? Uh, scrolling on down through the marketing profile, anything with a red asterisk is going to be a required field. So obviously you're going to th have things like your first name, last name. You can put your agent license number, your team name. Uh, if you're a solo agent, you can leave the team name blank, or you could put the market center, uh, you know, Keller Williams Consultants Realty on there if you want. Uh, your professional job title, probably realtor for most everybody. Um, any credentials, professional designations or accreditations that you have. Uh, command does have a basic bio already in there for you. I mean, it's actually pretty well written for a generic bio, I have to say. Um, but definitely, if you have not yet, you're going to want to get in there and personalize that to yourself. Uh, some of the things that I recommend people put in there, uh, if you have any specialty areas, obviously, if you're in, you know, luxury uh, division or you, you know, specialize in like VA loans or, you know, um, I'm taking a military relocation uh, certification class here at Hondros this month. So that'll be one in my wheelhouse, whatever the case may be. Uh, we had an agent that literally put in there that they were bilingual. They, they speak English and Spanish. And I don't know if it got them a deal, but it got them a phone call because somebody in KW was looking for a referral and that came up. So definitely put stuff like that in there. Um, again, it, it is a generic bio. It, it'll get you by, but you definitely want to go ahead and personalize that. Okay. Uh, continuing on more red asterisks. So those are required. Your mobile phone, office phone, fax number, uh, email address, your website, that could be your KW agent site, or it could be your, uh, if you're on a team site or you have a different site, like I said, you know, if you're utilizing something like Wix or SurveyMonkey, or not SurveyMonkey, excuse me, uh, some of the other areas or, or uh, vendors that actually do uh, websites for you, definitely plug that in there. Uh, the Market Center brokerage logos, again, those have the same graphic requirements as before. Definitely, please make sure you have the most current logo. If you are not sure, uh, please write this down. Go to kwcresources.com. Again, that's KWC, KW Consultants, kwcresources.com. Uh, that's our KW Consultants webpage that Angela, she put a lot of time and effort into that and set that up. And she's got a lot of great resources on there for all of our agents. Uh, one of the things up towards the top of the page is a link, excuse me, to the shared Google Drive that has all of our current KW Consultants logos. I always like to bring that up because uh, we've been joking lately that uh, the Columbus Board of Realtors might've been uh, bored during COVID because it seems like they are going around and they are finding things uh, for people uh, that are out of compliance. And there have been a lot of fines going around. I mean, there's, there's typically people that get hit every once in a while anyways, but it just seems like that's really ramped up uh, during COVID. So please definitely make sure that you go in there and uh, get the current logos. Um, we definitely, I went in there, actually, I changed the folder name so that it should be based on the usage. So it should literally say like command marketing uh, or digital or print high resolution, uh, et cetera. I think they used to be named RGB and CMYK and that just confused the heck out of everybody. So hello, Heather, <laughs> I see you pop in. Um, so please make sure you got that. We don't want anybody getting fined for compliance issues. Uh, again, to the right, you've got all your market center information over there. Uh, there is an area to put some legal footer compliance, whether it's text, whether you have a link to it, uh, whether it's a graphic that is optional in the state of Ohio, but of course we have to put that into command. 
uh, for the states it is required. Uh, one thing that we do recommend is everybody, this is just like a standard KW disclaimer. Each Keller Williams office is independently owned and operated. That's just a standard legal disclaimer we put in there. Uh, if you want to put that great, if not, again, it is optional, but uh, something you could put if you wanted to. Uh, your social links are in there. Those are available. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn, okay? Um, we get people ask me all the time, which social media should I be on? Um, it doesn't, honestly, it doesn't matter. What I tell everybody is pick, pick one or two and, and then be consistent in that. Most people are on Facebook. And the great thing is Facebook integrates with command, but also on LinkedIn. So if you're not on Twitter, YouTube, that's fine. Uh, but just an option for you. If you have a, 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 a opportunity to show that you have a high media presence, a social media presence, that is a good thing. So I would come in here like Twitter. I know Heather's heard this bill before. I, I did the, the Twitter account over at, at CBRE for about 13 years. And between that and Donald Trump, I will never tweet again. As long as I live, I'm done with Twitter. Uh, so it does not mean that it's not a valid tool and a good tool and a resource for you guys. However, if you don't do Twitter, then it's okay to put the KWRI URL in there, okay? If you don't have a YouTube channel over here, well, we have one for KW Consultants, okay? Put the YouTube channel there. So again, it shows you've got a great social media presence, but you don't have to worry about updating those pages because we're doing it for you in the background. It's kind of like the Scrubbing Bubbles commercial. Isn't their logo? We work hard so you don't have to. Uh, <laughs> so uh there you go. Uh, a couple more things in here. If you run Facebook ads, you'll end up with a pixel number, of Google Analytics ID. If not, don't worry. And one last thing you might see in there that you won't see in mine yet anyways, I, I, my disclaimer, I'm not an agent, but it might say down here, your branded KW app link. Uh, if you have actually gone through the Kelly guide and set up your KW app, it'll give you a URL for that. Uh, definitely make sure uh, that you've got that down at the bottom of your marketing profile. If that is not set up and that is not displaying like mine, then hey, get a hold of David again. Again, I'll put my Calendly link in the chat before we get out. And uh, I will walk you through setting up your app uh, because there's some great things. And ironically, guess what? You can make a landing page based on your KW app, which hey, we're gonna talk about today. So there you go. <laughs> all right, any questions on the marketing profile gang? Anything at all before we move on? I missed about the uh, my photo. I just got a new headshot. That's more. Uh, which, which one? The headshot photo or the team logo? The headshot. Yeah, just a couple of things I brought up about that is that it, there are some restrictions on there. It has to be a JPEG or a PNG, but also smaller than one one megabyte. I bring that up because a lot of people that go get new headshot photos, they get the photos back from the photographers. The photo sizes are like the raw photos, so they're very large photo sizes or file sizes. Four yeah. megs, six megs, et cetera. Um, if you guys know how to edit a photo, that's great. If not, please don't stress yourself out trying to do it. Uh, just get a hold of me. I will gladly resize photos for you guys so you can concentrate on real estate and I can take care of your graphical issues. How's I that? just got a new headshot. It's like 1.73, and I was trying to mess around with the size and I don't know how to do it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't know how, by all means, shoot me an email and just say, hey, can you size this down for my marketing profile? I will definitely do that for you guys. Again, we're turning around right back to you again. All right, thanks. Absolutely, yeah, no, great question. All right, gang, so uh, without any further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we'll get into our landing pages here. Over on the left-hand side, I always like to bring this up. These are all your different applets, so just the navigation links, how you get around command. If you pause on each one, you get these little screen tips that pop up that tell you which ones they are. Um, I'm, I'm okay using that. I like to save my screen space, so I'm okay using the little pop-ups. If you like seeing your menus, a lot of people don't know this, but if you just come up here and click on the KW on the top left, it actually expands this out and you can see uh, each of the different areas. Some people didn't know that, so I'm trying to bring it up more often. Uh, if you click on it again, it'll go away. It's just a preference, but if you like the menu things and not have to worry about what the two little hands are, that always reminds me of the United Way symbol for some reason, um, <laughs> then uh, feel free to expand those out. Or it, like me, I like having more screen space, being a marketing guy, so. I just leave them collapsed, but that option is there for you guys. Uh, what we're gonna go to is do is go down to the very bottom there is our consumer applet. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and our consumer applet is anything that's web-based. And you'll see when I click on that, we've got three different options up on the top. We've got our agent site pages. So this would be my KW website for me. You can see my URLs right over here, davidtravelhomes.kw.com. I've got landing pages is the next one, which is what we're about to go into. Then the third one, I've also got a guide builder, 
which is the buyer's guide and the seller's guide that are resident within your KW app. Speaking of that KW app, again, these are in your KW app. And at some point in time, you're probably going to want to come in here and personalize uh, these guides as well. And that's a, that's a great value to have for your client. So uh, there, that's a whole other client. I think I've actually got one recorded on our YouTube channel. But let's go ahead and get to our landing pages here. And you can see I've got a whole uh, bunch of them here that I've already worked on. Um, I'm going to pull up a couple just to give you guys some examples so you can just kind of see the done product and then we'll walk through the process. So notice down here I've got one. Here's a, a just listed uh, landing page uh, that I did for 5448 Larkshire Court. This is actually a home in Hillier that my wife and I looked at, fell in love with. I think I fell in love with it more than she did because it had an, I'm an outdoor guy, had an amazing deck, like an awning, like a fire pit, a massive grill, you know. Uh, so just all that stuff that us guys like, um, or some of the ladies too. <laughs> and uh, But again, the, the advantages of the landing pages, they are standalone and they do not connect to your agent sites, but it does allow you to get unique URLs. So I'm going to click on that just so you can take a peek at it. You can see that this is branded. I've got my information up on the top left, my headshot photo. Again, it, it, if you have your marketing profile set up during the creation process, it just pulls this information over easy peasy. So here's the, the house itself. There's that amazing deck that I told you about that I fell in love with, basic house information. Uh, here's all the photos literally pulled in from the MLS listing, which we'll walk through how to do that. Uh, all the home details, I, I've got a location map. OK, so just just basics on the home itself. OK, uh, there's more I could add to that page, but that's just a very, very basic just listed website. OK, uh, here's another one that I did. This is for open house. Uh, we actually I, I, I'm not going to do open houses today. I hope you guys don't get mad. But uh, uh, Ash Gale and I are teaming up because he's like that open house guru in our office and I'm doing the tech side. So we're actually doing a mastermind open house class coming up in two weeks. Highly encourage you guys. I think it's on the 16th, if I remember right. Uh, so highly encourage you guys, if you're doing or wanting to do more open houses, we're going to teach you like process and procedure wise how to do it. And then I'm going to teach you the tech behind it, creating an open house landing page and then doing smart plan follow-ups for that as well. That, that should be a great class. So this is an example of an open house. One again, you see the header up top with just basic information in the home. But the key to this open house one is we've actually got a client sign in here. And that's a great thing to do rather than the old days, or I hate to say it some days, I've heard people still doing it. You have an open house and you have a paper and pen and people signing in. Uh, we, Ash has got a great process where he's got his iPad set up on an easel and he basically blames everything on security and COVID. He said, hey, for security, you have to sign in before we can walk you through this house. And because of COVID, we can't print out any marketing materials and hand them out right now, which to me, that's a genius way to do it. So they have to go over and sign in. The cool thing about this sign in, and, and we'll see that when we do some stuff today, uh, it automatically captures the, the contacts into command. There's no, you know, the day after you're sitting there typing in all the stuff you wrote down on a piece of paper. You have to, you know, copy and paste it from wherever you were capturing it somewhere else. It goes right into command. All you have to do then is tag it, open house, 5448 Larkshire, and I can easily look for and organize those or create a smart plan that does automatic follow-up stuff with those people. That's what we're going to talk about in that open house one. But here you go, gang. There's the same house. Kind of looks the same. It's the same housing information, the photos, et cetera. But one of the other things I added uh, for this one was also uh, a kind of a neighborhood snapshot so they could get some demographics uh, as well. And then down below, we've got the legal uh, footer down there as well. Okay. So that's an open house one. Uh, I've got, let's see, do, 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 do I have the other one? No, I don't think I do. Okay, I thought I had another example on there. So, so without any further ado, that, that's just a couple of examples. Um, we've had people that, that have also done landing pages for events. Uh, if you have anything going on, you know, whether it's a, it could be an open house, but it could be something else. Uh, maybe you're doing, you know, a happy hour. COVID's starting to open up with the vaccinations. Maybe you got a happy hour going on. Maybe you have a, a seminar or a webinar even, it could be a Zoom call for uh, maybe you and some other people are getting together and you're doing like our, our first time buyers home seminar, you know, uh, maybe you're including your listing agency, some other things. So you can do events on here as well. And it's awesome because one of the things you can add to landing pages now is video. And we're gonna cover that, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go through the very first one, which, which we talked about. 
which was a listing landing page. Okay, just a basic listing landing page. This could be a listing that's already, you've already got it. This could be a coming soon, either way, gang, okay? Um, but again, the advantage to doing those is you can take this and you can plug this in as the website for your Facebook ads as well. Don't ever forget, this is not just making a page and that's all you got. You can use these URLs for other purposes, okay? For smart plans, for Facebook ads, et cetera, all right? So we're gonna come up here on the top right, we've got this create a new page button on the top right of the, <clears throat> excuse me, consumer area. I'm gonna click on that and command's gonna ask me, hey, I'm gonna create a new page. Would you like to create a new agent site or would you like to create a landing page? You guys came to the landing page seminar today, so we should probably do a landing page, huh? Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and click on that. Give me just one second, guys. Sorry, when I talk and teach all day, I get dehydrated. All right, so we'll choose as a landing page. And I'm going to go ahead and click on create page. All right. Now, when I do that, you're going to see a couple things pop up on the screen here, okay? On the left-hand side, doesn't look real exciting. It's basically a big, giant blank area right now. Not too exciting, okay? Uh, the first thing I always tell everybody to do when you come in here, let's go ahead and name this thing now, okay? So up on the top left, you're going to see this area with a title. Uh, just gives you a generic title, new landing page with a pencil. Let's change that to uh, new listing. And I'm going to use that same house. That's been working well for me so far. Larkshire, 5448 Larkshire Court. Again, you can name it whatever you want if you want to put the address in there, et cetera. Uh, that's cool. And then basically, the basic process of creating this page game is that we have what are called widgets over on the right-hand side. You've got several of them when you do create uh, a landing page. There's a few different ones when you do your agent site, so they're not all the same. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag these widgets over to this blank white area, this body area, and as we do that, it creates our basic template for our page. Then we need to go in and we need to configure all those widgets and put all the specifics in there, okay? But I think this is going to see, uh, this is where you're going to see where the marketing profile save you some time and energy. So the first thing I always recommend is to put a branded header on everything. So I'm going to go over here to this widget. And all I'm doing, gang, is I'm clicking and I'm holding my mouse down. And I'm just going to drag it over to this area. See how green line shows up? Uh, and wherever the green line is and you let go of your mouse, that's where that widget's going to go on your web page. Okay. So it's the first one. So it's just showing that it'll be at the top. No big deal. But when I let go, you can see it already saved me time and effort. There's my information that pulls in automatically from my marketing profile, David Satterfield, my phone number, my email, and my headshot. If that marketing profile was either turned off or not set up, you would have to configure this stuff right now. And you'd be spending your time typing in information and putting in a headshot photo. And that's just a waste of time. Get your marketing profile set up, okay? <laughs> that's my plug, <laughs> all right? So the listing page, uh, the next thing I would grab is right over here, you've got listing. It's got kind of the for sale sign on it. So I'm gonna, same thing, I'm just gonna click and hold my mouse. I'm gonna drag that widget from the widget area over to the page area. And notice, this is where I can show you now where that green line goes is where the widget goes. I can put it above my header or below my header. Obviously the header should go up the top. So we're gonna let go below and boom, there's my listing area. Now don't worry, it's 300 Hilltop View in Texas, I know. Uh, we're gonna fix that later, okay? So we've got two different widgets there, but now you can see it's got the, the basic uh, photo that was chosen uh, to highlight. I've got all the basic property information, uh, 32. That is a big house, wow. Five bedrooms, <laughs> I just realized that's like 30, almost 3,300 square feet. <laughs> Uh, about the property, it's got the MLS photos, okay, it's got the, the uh, all the property information down there from the MLS, and then a location map as well. Those are all things that we'll go in and we'll configure in a little bit here, okay. Um, a couple other things that I could add, uh, re remember that um, this is a landing page for a coming soon or a just listen. I may use this in conjunction with a smart plan or like I said, with a Facebook ad. And even though Facebook ad has automatic lead gen on it, we'll ask them for your names. If somebody forwards this to somebody else, they might get around the Facebook uh, lead gen so that they, they, you know, like if they share the post or they just send the link off to a friend, it might not capture them. So it's not a bad idea to put over here. You've got what's called a lead form, okay? I'm going to click and drag and pull that over here. You can see the green arrow pop up and down. Let's go down to the bottom. Whoa, hey, come back over here. Sorry, guys. That was weird. Put that down at the bottom of the page. 
Oh, geez. I just about I grabbed the wrong one. Sorry, guys. Yep, I accidentally uh, grabbed the listing one again. That's okay. If I click on this listing, you can see this little menu pops up. There's a trash can icon right here. I was going to click on that, and you can get rid of anything you accidentally add. What? Oh, there it is. It was right by it. lead form. I got listing instead of lead form. All right, down to the bottom here. There we go. And this is the same exact uh, lead capture form that you saw on the open house. Okay, uh, it's got five different fields there. I will tell you right now, you cannot configure those fields yet. I've had agents ask about that. Can I put different fields in there? Ask for different information. What if I want their home address, et cetera? Uh, right now, these are set by the widget, but that is one of the things we've heard that they're going to do uh, soon is to update some of these widgets and add some other options in there. So for now, the only things you can ask for are first name, last name, email address, phone number, and leave a note. Now, on the open house one, Ash has a great idea. He always tells everybody or asks them when they fill this out, where did you get the, the lead for this house from? Was it a Facebook ad? Was it a friend? Was it a broker, an agent referral, et cetera? Um, so that's all the basic information you can pull in there. And then the last widget I'm going to add for now, again, we're just doing basic pages, is the legal footer. Always a good thing to put on the bottom. Drag that down to the bottom of the page and let go. And again, you can see it, it's automatically filled in all my information. I've got my KW Consultants, the proper logo. I've got the Market Center info. I'm good to go. And here's all those, those, those social media things. Remember, I don't do Twitter, but it's got a link for, to Twitter and it's got our KW Consultants YouTube channel on there. Okay, so again, shows that you have a really good social media presence, all right? So that's a basic landing page, gang. It, now remember, all we've done so far is set up the template. We don't have any actual information in there yet. So once you drag the widgets over that you want, we're gonna go down here on the bottom right and you've got an option that says configure widgets. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that, okay? And there we go. Now you'll notice I've got four different areas that I set up because I dragged four widgets over. I've got a branded header, I've got a listing, I've got a lead form and legal footer. Now, branded header, three out of four of these, <laughs> what was that old Sesame Street song? One of these things, not like the other. Uh, three out of four of these, <laughs> thank you for the laughter header. Uh, my kids hate my dad jokes. Um, three out of four of these are green with a check mark in them, okay? So command is telling you that whatever information was required to put in that widget, it's already there. So it probably pulled everything over from your marketing profile, and that's okay. But I still want to go into each one and show you what the options are so we can see them, okay? The one that does need to get worked on is listing. You can see that that is white. It's not green yet, so it's not done. So I'll go ahead and click on the branded header just so we can see all the information, and you can see that we have an option to put some header text. Now, there is a character limit down here, zero out of 30. So you do have to watch your titles can only be so long in here, okay? So I'm going to put something like our, whoops, can I just, Hilliard two L's, there we go. Our new Hilliard listing, okay? Say under 30 characters. If you just want to put the address on there, you can say new listing, et cetera. I mean, as long as you're within the 30 characters, totally up to you what you put there, okay? Uh, the headshot photo, again, it automatically pulled that in from my uh, marketing profile. Don't worry if you did this and you realize, oops, I got my new headshot photo. You can always change the picture here, delete it if you didn't want one on there, et cetera. There's my name, there's my phone number. Um, I'm a, you know, I'm just a big stickler. I like the dashes in there. So I just want to prove that I can change that phone for, phone number format for you guys. Um, also, there's my email address. And again, team logo. I didn't have one on my marketing profile. But again, if you have one you want to put, you can do that. Okay. So that was step one. That was the branded header. Now, notice, since I came in here to configure the widgets, now this changes up at the top. I've got these little navigation arrows. It shows me that I'm on branded header and I'm on step one of four. So now, if I just click on the right green arrow, it takes me to widget number two, which was our listing, okay, our listing widget. Now, it had a default in there in Texas. We knew that wasn't right because we're in Dublin, Ohio. So I'm going to click on browse listings, okay? I have to ask everybody when you get to the step, be patient. Command is now interacting with your MLS. It can run a little bit slow when you go through this step. So if it kind of freezes up for a minute, don't freak out that it's not acting instantaneously, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my listing. Of course, you would put yours, uh, Larkshire Court. Yeah, you can see it down there. I've already done it before. <laughs> but I will specify Hilliard, Ohio. 
and click on search. And oh, hey, there's some more over there. I might have to go look at those houses now. Oh, and they're cheaper too. Uh, <laughs> They might have <laughs> Heather's laughing. Thank you again. Uh, they might not have that nice deck on the back that I like, though. Okay, um, so here we go. There's my five four four eight large shire court. Now I do want to show this, gang. If for some reason your property did not show up, your listing did not show up in the MLS, you do have some options here when you're searching. You can actually search by the MLS number, or you could also search for the KWLS ID if you needed to. Just if something went wrong and it wasn't show up, just want you to know you have those other options there to help search for your property. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this one. I know this one already sold because it broke our hearts, but I'm going to go ahead and select that one. See how it's so slow, just moving over to the side. Okay, again, it's interacting with the MLS. Give it a second here, though, and, and hopefully it'll update. Fingers crossed. Hopefully I don't have too many programs open on my computer. You know what? I'm going to close my Outlook, actually. Give us a little more memory here. Shoo! That took a minute. <laughs> Good thing I warned you guys ahead of time that slow. It was proving me right. Okay. So we're still in the configure widget for the listing widget. All right. So you can see the basic information shows up. Now, notice the photo hasn't changed yet because I it's got all the photos here from the listing. I just haven't chosen one yet. So here's all the photos that pulled in from the MLS. This one's got some really nice stuff. Again, just me, man, I just really love that, that back deck they've got on there so let me click on that uh and again give it a second you know, i'll click on save and apply so we can just kind of force the hand there we go i was hoping that would lock me up um the other thing i want to point out gang is um still look for the mls on like the mls search for uh first i mean but if you, uh, we've had instances where agents said, hey, I, I've got photos from the photographer, you know, because if you look, look in the background uh, behind this desk, you can see that these photos were taken in fall or winter. The trees are like dead off of, or the leaves are, are dead off of the trees. So if you ever have updated photos, don't stress that, that the MLS photos are not up to date. There is an option right up here. See where it says header image. You've got the option to click on custom photo. And then you would just click here and it would just ask you, hey, where are your photos? Well, there you go. There's my new headshot photos. Um, <laughs> but if you had some of those like you'd saved on your computer, you could always upload a, uh, a photo on your own. OK, so don't ever stre uh, stress that. All right. So everything looks good. Now, when I scroll down, hopefully when I scroll down. Oh, man, that I can hear my uh, fan worrying on my laptop. It's thinking hard. Let's get off this widget soon. All right, so that's got my basic info. It's looking good. I'm going to go ahead and click on the next arrow here. So we'll go from widget number two to widget number three, which is the lead form. Okay, uh, the default there is interested. Let's talk. Um, I'm going to just say, now notice there's no limit on this title, which is kind of nice. So, whoops, sorry, my mouse is just sensitive and all over the place. So I'm going to go ahead and type in. Uh, something like, please contact us to set up a private home showing today, right? Okay. And notice, again, when I click on the save and apply at the bottom, you should see that title. It always scrolls up for some reason. There you go. Automatically updates that lead form. But again, that's a great way to capture those leads automatically go into command for you, okay? And then the last thing on the bottom is the legal header. So I'll click on the arrow to go from widget number three to widget number four. And you can see all the stuff I talked about from the marketing profile, all the social media links, uh, my logo uh, is in there, uh, all the market center information, et cetera. Okay. So it looks like we're good to go right now. So I'm going to go ahead and save this landing page. Okay. Right up here on the top right, save landing page or publish the page. I'll just save it for now. We'll save it as a draft. We will publish this. I just want to show you a couple of options in case you do have to do a draft. Sometimes you're working on it and you just need to save the work and come back to it later. Sometimes, especially if on your team, you might have to have a team member, maybe the Rainmaker, take a look at it, say it's okay, et cetera. All right. But now that I'm back here in my consumer area, uh, I'll put me back in agent site. Let's go back up here at the top of the landing pages. Here is my draft. New listing, 5448 Larkshire. Okay. If I come over here on the far right, I've got some options here. I've got edit. And that's how I can go in back in there and I can just edit information if I want, okay? Um, I think this one's ready to go. It's always a good idea to preview this. So a couple other options that you have. 
um, over here on the top right above the page. If you're working, uh, you've got undo and redo buttons over here. So kind of like the Microsoft Word ones. Remember the circular arrows used to have over the top of Word and Excel. Uh, so if you ever do anything wrong, don't don't stress. Don't try and you know do all these weird stuff. You do have a, an undo and a redo. It only does one though in this case. Um, but the other thing that I can do is I can preview this. If I pause on this one, you see it says preview, which I'm going to go ahead and do. Hopefully. Come on, man. you turn me into a liar here. See if I can get to it this way. These are preview buttons as well for a desktop, a tablet, and a mobile phone as well. Mm, hang on, gang. Yeah, it's, oh man. Yeah, my, uh, sorry, my laptop is really working overtime right now. Let me get out of there before it crash. All right, I'm gonna go back to edit and let's just publish this thing now while we got a chance. Whoa, what on earth? No. Oh, I'm a, <laughs> sorry, guys. I was back on agent sites. Jeez, it's been a long day. Um, I, up here, I was on agent sites. Sorry, I went to the wrong page. I'm going back here to landing pages one more time. Far right, go to the edit option. There we go. And now let's publish that page. Okay. All right. So it's going to ask you if you want to update an active page. This will change the published version. Yes, absolutely. Update it. I hate that it doesn't keep you in landing pages. This freaks me out every time. There we go. So now you can see our new listing, right? Is it the status is that it is active, it's published. You can turn this on and off right here. Okay. If I just clicked on that green arrow. Are you sure you want to set this to inactive? It will remove that page from the internet. I don't actually want to do that now, but I do want you to see that's how you turn a web page on and off. Okay. I also needed to publish it to get these options over on the right hand side. I could also deactivate it over here from the same edit menu. These three little dots are the edit menu but I can also change the URL. And this is how you can get kind of a custom URL for this. Now, you can't change the basics on the front. That's, that's kind of a disadvantage. You can't literally purchase 5448 Larkshire Court. You'd have to go to like godaddy.com or something like that to do that. Uh, but you can personalize this last part here. And I'll do uh, Larkshire Court. Here we go. Actually, spell it. I think my last one I used it with CT. So it does give me kind of a personalized URL. These are just easier on the eye when you're looking at it. Um, so I, I've had agents ask me, why bother to do that? If I can't literally go and buy within command 5448larchiercourt.com, why would I want to do that? Well, gang, here's the thing if this web page is live on the internet, the web crawlers, those are the things that things like the search engines, Google and, and uh, Bing and Yahoo and all the other search engines, they search everything on a web page on the internet to put the search engine rankings higher. That's called search engine optimization. It will find 5448 Larkshire Court if it's part of your URL. So if anybody was searching for court or if I wanted to put Hilliard in the name, et cetera, it would come up when people are searching for things Hilliard related, okay? Now I can't tell you based on that, like how far or how many pages through Google, but that does help with your search engine optimization, gang, okay? So if I click on the URL now, we'll just go peek at the page so you can see our finished product. There's my happy face. There's the information. I chose the default photo with the basic house info, but here's still all the different MLS photos that I could look through, okay? Basic house info, the map, this is on Google Maps. So I could, go, uh, I could zoom, I could go satellite view if I wanted to see. One thing you can't see if this thing is next to train tracks or an open lot they're working on, et cetera. Sometimes you want to go between map and satellite, okay? There's the lead gen form we had and then my footer, okay? So just very, very basic page. But again, now I can use that things like my Facebook ads. I can use that in my smart plans uh, as follow-up items as well, okay? So that's kind of a basic landing page. Uh, I'm going to move on to some other examples. Anybody have any questions kind of on the the process or how to walk through that so far, not too bad, right? Okay, so the next one I wanna show you, and this is becoming very, very popular, is a landing page with some video on it. That's one of the options that we do have in command now. 
Uh, I don't know if any of you were uh, went to the uh, the training we had with, I believe it's Ken Pozik, the guy that's one of the top 100 Gary Keller uh, uh, realtors. He's down in Orlando, Florida. He basically moved there. I think he was from Michigan originally. Sorry, I can't say the M on it because I'm a Buckeye fan. Um, <laughs> but he moved down there, didn't know anybody, didn't, didn't have a network, didn't know anybody. And he tried everything, paid ads, radio, TV, like all these things, marketing things, and they just weren't working for him. So he decided at that point he was going to become – like the Orlando YouTube guru. So if you ever go look for Ken Posick, like he does everything down there. Like he did a tour of Shaq's home just to like build followers. He does reviews on like Disneyland or I, or Disney World, sorry, Disneyland, Anaheim, um, et cetera. My point being video has gotten very big, okay? Between YouTube, between Vimeo, uh, TikTok is the latest, you know, craze for all the younger generation, et cetera. So we're going to go do a landing page where we can put some video in there. So again, I'm going to go to the top right, create a new page. Okay. Again, it asked me agent site or a landing page. We'll do a landing page. All right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll just call this a KW video example. How's that? Again, make sure that you do rename these. And like I said, anything I always start with, I always go with my branded header. There is another one here that's agent branding, but to me, it's really big. I mean, that's kind of big and chunky to put up at the top of a web page. But hey, if you like that style, I just want to see what the widget look like. Um, it does put it over on the far left. Some, some people say, hey, that's more eye appealing, et cetera. Uh, for me, when I'm doing these things, again, it's just my personal preference. I prefer the smaller, thinner branded header. Again, just my preference, okay? So over here, we've got another one. It's called the video widget. I'm just going to drag that one over. Again, watch where the green line goes. That's where the widget goes. I'll release that mouse. And all we see right now is this big unconfigured video widget. Okay. And then again, just to keep this basic, I'll put my legal footer uh, down on the bottom. And now we've got one, two, three different widgets. Same thing we did before, right? Same process. Drag the widgets over. Now configure the widget. So we'll go configure widgets on the bottom right here. Click on configure widgets. All right. Um, remember, some one of the examples I gave for doing video, maybe you're having an open house. Maybe you're doing a, a training seminar. Maybe you're doing a Zoom call to walk through. Hey, we're going to talk about the top 10 tips for home buying, buying your first home, whatever the case may be. Okay. This is like a precursor. And you can also use these to, URLs to throw out on Facebook on your team pages, on your individual solo realtor pages, et cetera. So I'm going to say, uh, come to our home buying seminar. Whoa. Again, 30, let's see. Let's say first time home buyer seminar. Does that work? Oh, look at that. I can literally get the R in there and I'm at 30. <laughs> I could not have planned that any better. That was totally spontaneous, by the way. I did not plan these. Uh, <laughs> all right, so same thing, gangs. You've got all the information pulls over from your marketing profile. Whoops, see, there I go clicking on things. Uh, my headshot, my name, my phone number, and my team logo, okay? So header is good to go. Again, I'm going to come up here to the top. Branded header is step one of three. I'm going to go click over to the right for widget number two, which is now my video. Now, I already have this pulled up. I went and I found an actual KW one on YouTube. You could do this one of two ways. I'll come back to the video here. Sorry to banter around. You could use a video URL. So if you've actually got a URL on YouTube or, or uh, Vimeo or TikTok or something like that, you can put the URL in here. You're good to go. Okay. If you have a video that you've recorded, maybe you actually recorded this seminar. Okay. Uh, maybe, you know, I, I did an example once where I literally walked outside the consultant's office, filmed myself on my phone and just said, hey, this is David. I'd like you to come to my open house seminar today, et cetera. Kind of an intro. Okay. Maybe it's a... Uh, a uh, virtual tour that you have. A lot of people are engaging in uh, like Matterport videos nowadays, right? You do a virtual tour through the home or a drone video that, you know, kind of showcases things. However you have that. Um, you do have two choices. So you can do it from a URL or you can upload the video. If I click on that, you see, once again, it just says drop here or click to browse. You just go find that file, okay? Just to make things easy today, I'm just going to grab this YouTube video link. I thought that was, was cool. Uh, I always enjoy these little cartoon uh, videos that they do as they're talking. They like draw out the cartoons at the same time. So I'm just going to grab that URL. I'm going to click and paste. I copied the URL. Now I'm going to paste it. Okay. And I am going to save and apply that one. Anytime I make a big change to the page, I always like doing the save and apply uh, just to make sure we do it. And boom, there you go. You can see the actual uh, preview in there. Okay. 
Uh, so I, I do want to put a, uh, uh, some text in there. Let's see, what do they have in here? I could copy and paste it. Or, uh, Keller Williams home buying video sounds good to me. And then a description in there. Again, this goes up to 200 words, so you've got a little more freedom here. Uh, please check out our video to help out first time. I think that was our assumption we're doing. First time home buyers, right? Purchasing, there's an R in there, purchasing, <laughs> purchasing process. Okay. All right, again, I'll save and apply that just to make sure we're good to go. And then last thing, click on the arrow to go to the third widget, which is the footer, which we already know is good stuff. So rather than save that, I'm going to go straight to publish, gang. Okay, just save a little bit of time this time. Uh, again, took me to agent sites. Man, I wish it would just stay on landing pages. There we go. So there's our KW video example. It is turned on right now. I could It's active. I could deactivate it here, or I could go over here and deactivate it or I could change the URL, okay? I just want to bounce over there real quick and just show you. This is the basic page. This is the video. David first, David. Oh, hang on, sorry. What's that, Heather? I said, shouldn't you always save it first? You know, you actually don't have to. You can create it. That's why I save like during the process. Um, but if you haven't, then yes, I would do that. That's not a bad thing to do. We always say save often. Um, I, anytime that I complete a major step on my editing, this is just me being a marketing guy. I've always gotten the habit of saving major steps. So I know when I'm done like that, did you see that last step? I just went to the, the footer, uh, widget, but I didn't change anything. So I'm okay to go ahead and publish. Yeah. Yeah. But either save along the way, or definitely if you did all those steps and you hadn't saved, definitely go ahead and save first. Yeah. Great question. Okay. So there you go, gang. I, I've got a basic header. I've got my video in there. Uh, straight from YouTube, or you could have uploaded it. So it's an original video and my footer. And again, now I can take this URL. I can plug it into Facebook ads. I can use it in smart plans. I can post it to my solo realtor page. But the cool thing about having these URLs as well for these landing pages, uh, again, you, you may not be on all social media, but also all social media is not supported by command. Okay. Uh, LinkedIn, not supported by command. Uh, Instagram posts, not supported by command, although you can do ads there, okay? So the cool thing is if I make this landing page, I could immediately go into command campaigns and I could schedule a Facebook ad. I could do an email campaign. I could do a social media post to Facebook, Twitter, okay? But now I can take this URL and I can post the same thing to my LinkedIn. I can post the same thing to my Twitter. I can post the same thing to my Pinterest page if I wanted to. This helps you ensure that you're maintaining consistency across their social media as well. That's another great way to do that. Keep your stuff consistent, keep yourself branded and everything looks good. That's a good professional habit to get into, okay? All right. So again, there, there's one more. I won't walk through the whole thing. Again, I want to be respectful of your time, but I wanted to show you one other example that I wanted to bring up today. Uh, the other one is a client testimonial page, okay? Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'll click on one more time, create a new page. We'll go landing page. All right. First step, always come up here and change your name. So I'm going to just call this client feedback practice. Okay. Same thing we did before. I'll grab the same widget. So I'll grab a branded header. And then you've got this thing over here that says testimonial capture form. I'm going to drag that widget over. Remember where the green line goes. That's where the widget goes. I'll let that go. Uh, just to be consistent, I'll put my footer on there. There we go. And I'm just, we'll, we'll go to configure widgets. The only real thing I want to look at is capture testimonial. Okay. Uh, it's, it's got some headline in there. You could just say, you know, please let us know how we did. It's got a description in there. You definitely want to personalize this information. Okay. The review headline is down here where it gives you the four, you know, two, three, four, five stars, et cetera. So I'm going to, I'm going to say with just the default info, but I wanted to see you could change it or uh, update that and edit it. Okay. I'll publish it because I want to show you something really important here. There's more avenues that you as a realtor can get reviews from, right? Anybody ever gotten a, a LinkedIn review from anybody, right? 
or uh, I, I know it, nobody ever likes to mention the, the elephant in the room, but uh, maybe you're on Zillow and you've gotten some Zillow reviews. Maybe you've gotten some Google reviews. How do I bring those? I see smiling there, right? <laughs> no, I'm not supposed to talk about those guys, David. Okay. Well, I mean, hey, you may be on there. Why would you not want to capture that onto your client or, or your, your agent web page, right? So you build out a client testimonial page. Guess what else you use this for? Oh, yeah. You set up a smart plan to automatically ask the people that you do the deals with. This is the page you use. Okay. There's a, there's, I was going to say there's a smart plan. There's actually about 23 different smart plans for follow ups. Okay. All right. So this is what you would send to your clients when you help them sell or buy a house as well to get you some feedback. Feedback is gold. Okay. So the cool thing is, I already have this opened up, gang. So you can see it. This is the one I did for my page. After I got some reviews and I came back into it, uh, you can see, I uh, again, I'm not an agent, so I always use fictitious characters. So I've got like Tony Stark, Bruce Wayne, okay? Uh, you know, the Avengers and, and the, the Justice League, like they're always getting their houses blown up and stuff. So I've been working with these guys in business for a while, but these show up and I can choose. I, I only have two on this, uh, I did before the class, but I can choose who's gonna be on there by putting a check mark in there or not, okay? And I can also choose, I already chose it so you can't see it, but when I go into this originally gang, I already choose the option, but you can choose this scrolling marquee. Like it's, can you see how the page is kind of scrolling through those? Or you can choose a static one, which is just a list, okay? And uh, I believe, uh, I'll go and look this up. <laughs> Hold me to it if you don't believe me. I believe on the marquee, you can have up to seven scrolling through the marquee. Um, on the static ones, you can have up to 10. Okay, I don't know why the difference, okay? It might have to do something with the widget itself. Uh, but you may, that's why you may wanna go in and kind of pick and choose which ones you do, obviously to, to give yourself a good reputation. Um, I do wanna show you. Uh, if I come David, back. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you mentioned earlier about the Columbus Board of Realtors and fines associated, especially recently. Yes. Is there yes. any um, advice or concern that you'll tell should tell us about creating land and landing pages and to make sure that we add or like like I know you went to the um, Keller Williams YouTube and those mm -hmm. those great videos about like. Is there anything that we need to include in our landing page? And then when we send to URL that, that the Columbus Board of Realtors needs or is looking for? Um, and that's a great question. I may actually pose that to Joan, the stuff that we've been, because I, I don't have like a list of like what all the marketing specifications are. Right. Um, but what I can say, the things that we've been getting, seeing agents been getting hit with is uh, either individual solo logos or team logos being larger than your market center logo. That's not allowed. Okay. Right, right, right. Uh, that's one of the common one. Or like I mentioned before, the non-updated logos for your market center. Okay. Um, the widgets that are on here, specifically the headers and the footers are designed yeah. so that you will be in compliance. Okay. So that, that's why as far as a best practice tip, I would always say, always add the header, always add the footer. Okay. Yeah. Even if you're, all you're going to do is like one widget in there, or you build a huge one, always put that, that header or that footer on there. Okay. Right. Um, Great. If you really, I, I know I mentioned that I don't like the other header because it's just bigger and kind of clunky looking to me. Um, that one actually does bring in more information, such as your agent license number, your accreditations. So it's not a bad one to put on there. I'm just a marketing guy, I like clean and simple, et cetera. Uh, but if you ever wanted to do that, or obviously if you had a co-broker deal or co-agent deal with somebody uh, to cover both of your tails, I, I would maybe consider doing stuff like that. So yeah, great question. Okay. Um, I did want to pull this up real quick, gang, and then we'll get out of here. Uh, I actually did go to the unmentionables, the Zillow's, uh, not Bob and Lorraine. They're not the, the unmentionables, but I went to Zillow's website and I just did an agent search uh, to see who in KW is on there. Okay. And so this is the kind of thing you can do. They actually have a hundred reviews on Zillow from work that they've done. So the question becomes, how do I get Zillow's reviews and how do I utilize them on my web page, right? After I make that client testimonial form, which can feed back to your KW agent site, how do I get reviews from other places, LinkedIn or Zillow, et cetera? Well, it's real easy. I come in here and you can see who it's from, 
how long they've been. This is for a home bought in 2021. So they've been a client, you know, this year or for a year. Uh, that's basically a five star review. And there's the actual uh, information. Okay. So with that in mind, I could come back to my landing page, right? I'll go to the actual page. Oh, it's not, I don't know why that's not showing up. Give me just one second. I know I had one set up here. Let's do. Oh, it's probably because I'm in it. <laughs> Give me a second, let me move my menu. There we go. There's my client testimonial. So notice, I can go to that URL. I can go to that URL straight from command. Okay, I can literally sit here and type in reviews all days long, all day long. Please do not make it reviews for yourself. That highly unethical. Do not ever do that, please. However. If I had something, like I mentioned before, a LinkedIn or a Zillow or a Google review, somebody else that gave me just like mad props and I wanted them to be on my, my agent site, then I would come in here. I would copy this information down. Please, please copy and paste. You do want to get it verbatim because you never want anybody coming back saying, well, I didn't say that about you. But you can copy and paste first name, last name, the address of the property that they did. They've been a client since the star reviews. And then there's the actual review. Okay, if they gave you a, star, uh, a five star review, they're probably going to recommend you. You plop it into there and then it will show up like what I showed before, where you could choose uh, the different client testimonials that you show either in the scrolling marquee or in the stationary one as well, gang. So that's how you can use a landing page, not only to capture uh, client testimonials from your new clients that you just did deals with, excuse me, but also past ones that you may have had reviews on from other websites as well. Okay. So three examples there, gang. We did a, we did a basic listing landing page. Uh, you know, it could be a, a coming soon or it could be a listing that you had. And again, you can repurpose those in smart plans or in your Facebook ads. Uh, we did the landing page with the video so that you can use that, again, for multiple purposes. Uh, could be a, a virtual tour, could be an event that you have coming up, et cetera. Um, and then also the client testimonial, which will grab those for your agent site. And again, you can also use that in a smart plan as a follow-up action, uh, but then you can go and use that as well to capture your client testimonials from other resources that you might have had as well, okay? So my hope today is, is, is that you guys saw those. Maybe it sparked some ideas. Uh, again, real quick, let me, uh, does anybody have any questions before I stop my screen share? Anything at all? Okay. Let me go ahead and stop that. And I told you guys that I would put my Calendly link in here. Let me go ahead and do that real quick. And again, if anybody, if you get in there and you want to work on some pages or try it on your own, that's cool. Uh, if you run into any snags or feel free just to set up a one-on-one -on -one with me. And if you would like to just say, hey, David, I want to set up a landing page for this. Can we just walk through it? Hit me up. Be happy to do that. And by the time we get done, you'll literally have a working landing page. Uh, so that's always a win-win. <laughs> okay. So there is my Calendly link, guys. That is a tongue twister. Calendly. <laughs> Uh, please feel free to jot that down or just click on the link. You can always bookmark it in your web browser and hit me up anytime if you guys have any questions, if you need any help. I am here to make you successful. So by all means, feel free to utilize me. Uh, we do have an exciting, I'm trying to wrap up my summer schedule right now as far as the training schedule. Uh, if you guys ever have any needs or ideas for training classes, feel free to email me those or shoot them my way. Uh, I think I had a survey on our Facebook page uh, to find out what the most popular topics are. If you haven't done that yet, I encourage you to do that because I'm literally taking the top five classes from that list and that will literally be my July classes uh, to, because that's what everybody's asking for. But we're trying to do some more fun stuff as well. So trying to think outside the box here, just really find new ways to add value to get, uh, you guys. Uh, give me just one second. I know I wrote it down here. The 23rd, June 23rd is the open house. Uh, training uh, that I mentioned for you guys. So uh, if you'd like to attend that one, again, that's myself. And then as Ash Gale, we're going to kind of co-teach that one. Uh, and just anything and everything about open houses, how to run it, how to plan it, how to do it, and then all the tech behind it, how to do that landing page for the open house, and then how to take, you know, how do I do stuff with the contacts I captured, and then how do I put those into smart plans in command and just have automatic follow-up stuff for the clients. Yeah, Heather. You're on mute. <laughs> Sorry, it's like the quote of 2020, right? <laughs> You're still on mute.
She's trying. She's looking for it. Still can't hear you. Okay. There we go. You can hear me. Um, I can hear you. What's up? Oh, good God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it going to be in person? Uh, that one will not. And here's why. I'm literally waiting on my second vaccination shot. So you'll even notice in the office, I'm still wearing my mask. I'm probably like the only one. Um, I'm just doing that out of respect for everybody else. But come July, I will be teaching live tech classes in the training room. Again. We have, and we have brand new training technology. I don't know if you guys have been in there yet. We have a brand new roof mounted camera that can go anywhere in the class. We have roof mounted microphones to capture everything. Like oh, no. we can do podcasts now and like panel broadcasts. Oh, it, it's going to be an exciting summer for training. So yeah, <laughs> definitely plug into that. It's good. To, I just literally just got chills because I'm such a geek. <laughs> yeah, whoop whoop. <laughs> or was our video whoop whoop whoop. Um, so yeah, yeah, July will be live. So I appreciate you asking that because uh, a couple of people have asked me that as well. So yay, yay. <laughs> All right, well, gang, thanks for coming. I, I had I always have a good time teaching this stuff. So I hope you got a lot out of it. Any Thank questions? You. Call me anytime. Thank you guys. I appreciate you being here. Bye. Wish All me right, luck doing day. landing pages. Wish What's me that? luck, David. Wish me luck doing you landing don't need pages. Luck because uh, you have be good. mad skills yeah, now. <laughs> yeah, I do. Luck is not a factor. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, did you notice the uh, star behind her shoulder on the? Oh, oh I did earlier. Yeah, the Captain America. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, you, you get a my, yeah. You get a that's gold my kids, and it's day. my husband's office. Yeah, I've yeah got, uh, sure, got sure, sure. R two D two and Groot. We're a Marvel here. family. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah, always Marvel. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your week. Okay. Bye, Nate. Bye. 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 Thanks, Bye, guys. Ashen.